everybody and welcome to another episode of my very first job in America. My name is Sean Akinlosa too and this is the Sean On Demand channel on YouTube. I'm super excited you guys took the time to join us today. We are continuing down the series. I'm having conversations with my friends, my family members on what it was like or what it felt like to you know migrate from Nigeria or other African countries right to America and how well they settled in. If you missed any of the previous episodes, now is a good time to go back and start from episode one and then join us here once you catch up. Um, so thank you so much, uh, my friends, <laughs> Chrissy and Sister Helen, for joining us here today. Um, guys, they are members of my church, but also friends as well. So, and I've heard, you know, Sister Helen's part, a part of her story. And I felt like it's really interesting for you to hear her story as well. Because again, you know, this is very unique for everybody. You know, what happens with everyone, the journey to America is entirely different yeah. and unique for everybody. So they're about to share their own stories with us. And I hope you guys will definitely, definitely enjoy it. So, Sister Helen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When you first heard that you were moving to America, you know, wait, wait, let me say, were you in Nigeria? Yes. What part of Nigeria? In Lagos. In Lagos. Okay. So you were already in the hustle and bustle city and all of that. Yes. So when you first heard that you were moving to America, how did you feel? Um, I want to say it was mixed feelings. Okay. I was, of course, apprehensive, you know, mm -hmm. the uncertainties of, you know, a new country and mm -hmm, all of it. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I had, you know, my specific reasons why I was ready to leave the hustle and bustle. <laughs> I wanted to just, you know, do nine to five. Not like you can't do nine to five, but true, true. being a Nigerian and, you know, having done business on my life, it was, it's different, yeah. you know. And I thought, okay, that will be you know, a, good, a good place to start. To start you know? yeah. So I was really ready to just hit the road running yeah. with a nine to five job. <laughs> I'm not wondering how my profits went or what happened to my profits or who's owing me. I just want to work. Go home and rest. And you know, Nigeria's nine to five is not nine to five. I don't yes. know anybody who resumes work at nine a.m. and then leaves work at five p.m. and then exactly. gets home at a decent hour. No. Like I say, it's not nine to five because you, in order for you to resume work at nine, you probably have to leave your house like six, seven in the morning. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're coming no, from that's the mainland. Like four o'clock. Oh, four o'clock. I'm my bad. <laughs> The yeah, the, like you have to leave yeah. your house at four in the morning in order to resume work at nine, and then mm. you close at five to get home with like eight nine p.m. Oh my god! My goodness. Yeah. Okay, so I could definitely oh see god. why you were ready to leave all of that behind and oh, yes. come to Absolutely. a through nine to five job. But we're about yes. to find out very soon if that was actually the case. If that will happen, mm -hmm. Chrissy, how did you feel when you felt like you were moving to America? When you heard that, Chrissy, you're moving. What did you? How did you feel? Oh my god! It was super mixed feelings for me though because at the time we lived in Nigeria. We're okay. originally from Cameroon, but okay. we moved to Nigeria for political reasons mm -hmm. and. I was just settling in, you know, okay. moving to Nigeria alone was like me coming from my home home mm. to a new place. Yeah. I had to take some time to get used to the place mm -hmm. and I was just settling in. I was having fun. <laughs> I was in university, yeah. traveling with my friends, having oh. a party. I was like, <laughs> what? America again, another <laughs> new place, you know. I wasn't sure, but I was excited because, you know, like I found out that it's everybody's dream. Coming from Cameroon, it's never really been my dream to come to America. Okay. I just felt like I have my friends, I have my family, and that's all I need. Yeah. So in um, coming to Nigeria, I getting to find that everybody's so excited when somebody comes from abroad, <laughs> they want to go abroad. So I was like, okay, I'm getting this opportunity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why not? I was not thinking about work. Honestly, I was not even thinking about work. Mm -mm. I was just thinking like, okay, I have to go there, make new friends, yeah. go to a new school, mm -hmm, settle mm -hmm. in the settle culture, in, yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. It was scary for it me. It was scary for you. You know, and <laughs> I actually went to my dad and I was like, is it possible for everybody else to go for me to stay back? He was like, stay back with who? <laughs> You're not doing that. You have to go. And I was, what, 21? 21 back then. So it was then. like, it's not possible it's not for me possible to leave you behind yeah, by myself. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay. Let me just come and see what it is. But I told my dad one thing. I'm not coming to America. I'd heard some scary stories about people coming to America <laughs> and they have to get married to someone <laughs> to get a stay. And then he goes, maybe he's a psycho. Or, I'm like, I'm not going to do that. If I come to America and it doesn't work the first year, yeah. I'm surely going to go back home. Go back home. Okay. So when you finally got to America, mm. what was your very first impression? Like as soon as you got out of the airport and... Um, when you came out and you you know the the journey to the house and the first few days in america how did you feel were you still like were you excited at that point in time or were you just honestly when i got here because we came in through um florida okay my my in-law came to pick us up okay. so I was, was, was that during the winter 
It's Friday, oh, the Friday, Friday that's Friday, that's, that's true. So I don't it's know. Listen, it the reason I'm asking is because we've had it, you know, in the previous episodes, people yeah. that arrived in the winter. Oh, and my wife. <laughs> yeah. So I was excited when I got in there. The airport looks so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's huge. But then we started driving through some, some, some cities. I was like, hold up. <laughs> These places like this exist, exist in, in America. America. I said, Christy, just keep quiet. Maybe it's just you <laughs> not getting this thing right. So when we finally got home, I was excited but with mixed feelings mm. because I'm just apprehensive of new things. New things, okay. When once anything is new, yeah. I might get to like it later or enjoy it. Yeah. But I get so apprehensive and yeah. anxious. So you need that adjustment time. You yeah. need that time to kind of adjust. Yeah, that makes I don't sense. know what to expect. And then the cultural shock was on another level. <laughs> oh my God. Mind you were in Florida. Yeah. In Miami. Mm. So you have half naked, naked people. <laughs> People walking the street like they're clothed. <laughs> so you're wondering, like, what is, and my dad is in the, in the car. car. going on here i know myself if, I if, if i were to be in the car with my dad with half the girl up and down i'll be looking at his eyes to see his expression oh, my, <laughs> my, dad, my, my dad became a robot you didn't want to turn his neck <laughs> i remember my husband coming on one day from work i said helen you know what to say what i saw today oh my, God. my dad is just this <laughs> daddy mm -hmm. <laughs> he's not looking and then the scariest day was one time we, because we stayed in a hotel for a little bit mm -hmm. we rode in the elevator mm -hmm. and i'm in the elevator with my father and this girl walks in with her boyfriend oh my god i'm telling you when you say is it booty shorts they call oh it oh my god this one is not booty this shorts. Is the booty shorts. <laughs> it's pants it's pants because the thing is cutting halfway through her butt jesus. cheeks and the boy's pants are almost on his knee oh my <laughs> god jesus if my dad could crawl through the roof <laughs> And then his hands are on her butt cheeks. Oh my god. In front of, in my front father. of your father. I almost slapped them. I said, An African man, African father for that matter. You don't see this man's white hair. He'll be, Can you he'll help be considering man? his decision. <laughs> my dad looks oh, the elevator like this. Oh you think god. the elevator is about to transform. <laughs> he looked. And the thing was taking his time. I swear oh my god. All those crawling the elevators. The longest time ever. Yeah. As soon as we got oh there, they make almost pushed us. <laughs> to pass because it was just four of us in the yeah, elevator it was yeah. so, and the elevator was not that big it was so yeah. disrespectful oh. i was like is this america they say we should come to anyways <laughs> i'm just following orders <laughs> <laughs> Ah, at oh least you God. had someone to follow yeah, orders. Right? Now it was my responsibility to make the right decision, mm -hmm. you know, and to just, you know, make the most of, you know, the situation mm -hmm. I was in. Yeah. I mean, we came here. We we came through New York, and okay. we came in the winter, and oh. I oh my God. absolutely hate the winter. Oh. I mean, in Nigeria, when it's blazing hot, I'm still having a blanket over me. <laughs> like I have to have something, something covering, covering me. You. So imagine me in the winter. I was like, hey, uh, New York, <laughs> New York winter. Is. Did you have Did you have winter jackets though, or did, I, some, did they bring winter enough. jackets to the airport for no, you? No, we did. We we okay. no, we we planned it you well. Planned it well. You know? Okay, good. And like I said, it, for me, I thought I was still on. I came on vacation. Mm -hmm. I hadn't. It, it hadn't. Reality hadn't. You know, said it. Said it. Yeah. That I'm here to stay finally. So oh I held all the. In fact, I was talking to my daughter. I said, we're going to go to ice ring and we're going to go and skate and we're going to do all ah. kinds of <laughs> <laughs> because the first thing that someone said to me is like you are in america now stop picking the dollar it's on the floor <laughs> <laughs> are you serious oh my god wow oh my yes, god it wow. was it was a rude shock to yeah. find out that life is normal it's normal the same it's the same it's the you same you go to work you come back mm -hmm. there's hardly time for anything else anything else that's the thing the social life and that's one thing is i mm. felt like when i even though i left nigeria when i was in college over there i felt like i feel like if i lived in nigeria now i would have much much more of a social life yeah. than i yeah. do right now because yeah. america is so routine it's yeah. like you go from work much. to your house mm. to church to grocery shop and then you come That's back it, yeah and then maybe once in a blue moon during the summer when the weather is good when people have you know events parties or baby showers you yeah, go out you unlike nigeria where it's the weather is good all year round so there are parties everywhere. there's some every every, every, weekend, yeah. every every weekend i don't know if it happens to everybody even while i'm at the party mm -hmm. i'm still thinking of work i'm thinking of, of what i have to do of course the yep. week is about to start yeah. of course what i have to do so i'm like am i really enjoying myself yeah, yeah. what am i doing here, no and then know? you know nigeria you also have like a lot of help most most people mm -hmm. you know and that's the fun some people might live in a one bedroom face my face you and they still have a house help yeah right with them but whereas in america it's 
Mm -hmm. almost non-existent oh, you know some people God. have nannies yes you, nannies. you literally pay through your yeah you might have a have nanny that. who yeah. helps you with your children but then some of the nannies are like i'm you're paying me for my child they're not there to cook clean cut oh, your vegetables your pepper no. none of that for you so even I if miss, you have a I nanny miss those days. you miss those days. Seriously, part of the I've, things. I've, I think I've had nannies all my life with all my kids and then you came to nigeria and, and then it was a rude nigeria. awakening and you know the thing with for me was i was lucky because my kids were much older so okay i didn't have to run after them or anything oh but it's still it's still not the same you come home and You've gone all day, you've worked all morning, mm -hmm. and then you come in the evening, you're yeah. dusting, you're cleaning, mm -hmm. it's yep. just... It's, it's, it's a lot, yeah. it can be a lot, it takes a toll on people yeah, generally so i sure. can't even say that i and that's part of why i love I actually like you know love traveling to nigeria every year like mm. this pandemic has just done the most i can't wait to just get in my you know get my passport Honestly, get on the plane and out like i really have a lot of fun when i go to nigeria and i just like the feeling of not having to do anything for a little bit you understand right, a few weeks right. like i can just relax enjoy go to parties be with my family and friends and just and then the moment i come back to america as soon as yeah, the pilot go, lands yeah. like this i'm like <laughs> Yeah, did they do. send you to fly so fast? <laughs> Why did you, know, you have to it's, land it's, so it's fast? Doable. You know, it, even in America, it's doable. It and is. I think what, one one of the things I promised myself um, last year was like every year I have to go on a vacation Absolutely. somewhere. It doesn't Absolutely. have to be Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't have to be outside the yeah. shores of the country. But yeah. Just at least somewhere. Take Absolutely. time Online. off. It's, it's, it's really necessary. Important. It's necessary yeah. in America. You know, Nigeria. It a lot is. of people don't take vacations in Nigeria. Oh, and yeah. the reason I say so, the, the, every day is pure cruise. Every day yeah. is pure it's pure cruise in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. Every day is vacation, yeah. so to speak. So in America, mm -hmm. you you specifically the have planning. to take that time. Otherwise, it's you could plan. nearly. Yeah run yourself crazy if you don't you know take that time to just travel and do other things and the same routine things over so mm -hmm. i guess that's one of the things i miss about you know living in nigeria but of course there are definitely advantages to live in america living so here. when you first got to america your very first job what was your first job here i what was my first job i think i i worked at the kfc so okay you worked at your KFC, KFC was your first job. KFC is Kentucky, everybody knows KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken. So, did you ever imagine when you were coming from Nigeria? <laughs> Amy. You, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> that was a rude awakening. Serious rude awakening. Oh Guess what? what? After the first few days, I was like, I can do this, Helen. This is nothing. Uh -huh. Look, it's like working in your kitchen. You just do it. Uh, really? You see, after the, I think the third day or so, I just said, please excuse me, sir. <laughs> I went into the lesson. I cried. <laughs> I was literally oh wailing. Like, Nelly, what have you done? <laughs> oh, I know. Because all of a sudden, you're like, you, you, it's almost as if you probably appreciate your life in Nigeria oh more. Oh my God. Like me, come and fried chicken yeah. in America. And then you're not be smelling yeah. of oil. I burnt my hands, my fingers. I, and then the one for they'll be talking to you anyhow. Oh my God. People that on a regular day, especially like young children, because especially Shy. in those um, fast food area, mm -hmm. um, restaurants high like that, kids. high school kids are there. And most of us, when we come here, we're no longer high school. We're probably college at the minimum or above college. Then, you know, people that are like your little sister's age hey. mate that cannot say mm. when to you in Nigeria. We'll not be telling you, pass that chicken over there. Or, you know, you, you didn't clean the floor very well. What you, hey. what you doing? What you talking about? You need to clean the floor over there. And you're looking at them like, Chai, I can't even give you backhand. <laughs> I can't even send you to ancestors and call you an idiot or whatever. Are you mad? You, want to you know, go to jail. want to go to jail. She understands because you'll be afraid. You don't want them to deport yeah, you or yeah. you know land in jail because yeah. Americans, you know, they don't play. So it's like it's not your fault. Yeah. If your mates in Nigeria can they be talking, opening their mouth and talking to me? <laughs> but you, know, you, you know, one thing that worked for me though, what? like after working at the KFC for like a couple months, mm -hmm. my supervisor at the time was so like so every time there was a full house and they needed someone at the till yeah you know to take the customers mm -hmm. and everything he was so please can you help mm -hmm, me take mm -hmm, the next mm -hmm, customer mm -hmm. just because i mm -hmm. was in the kitchen yeah so we do the baking the cleaning mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. washing of the dishes <laughs> but every opportunity i had i would run to the till and say welcome to kfc how can i send you today so he was so impressed with me. i was like are you sure you're african you speak such good english uh, don't, they, don't they always say that all the time? You know like that, I think you speak they say, they, they say that all the time, they, you know, like they you know speak. that their English is very vernacular. I should say. <laughs> <laughs> that English they speak is not English. Is that English? Trust me. Mm. Uh, the guy was so impressed. Before I knew what was happening, I rose from dishwasher to <laughs> someone. I was so happy. Wow. I will walk in majestically, you know. <laughs> At least when I go come in the one I go, my cloth yeah, is not filled like with like flour. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh Christy, what was your first job in America? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Like I said, when I was coming to America, I was not thinking about work. Yeah. I thought it was just going to be fun. Back in Nigeria now, I'm considered a child now. Nobody has to <laughs> I'm considered a child. You know, so I came to America. They talk about work. I'm looking at them. How big? How do they work? <laughs> How am I going to do this one? 
So a friend of my, my in-law at the time we were living with told him about this um, security dress. Mm. security. Is that what we got? Hey, hold on. What we got? I did not post that again. What are you? Do you have to oh, oh, say what we got? I don't like the guard with uniform. Bag yes. <laughs> Man, Clean uniform for that matter. Clean. Security, you look like police officer. Say no, 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 no. Oh my security, my guard. Ah, you know you have to go through training. Everything that was frowning. The teacher would just look at me like, what is wrong? You thought you want to be happy that was frowning. At a point, I was like, I think my brother was just trying to encourage me. So he, he came and joined the Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. yeah. He came and joined the training. So he too, they were supposed to post him in another company, mm -hmm. another location, though. Mm -hmm. I said, anyways, it's just to say, they give you a fab or something mm -hmm. like that. They don't give me God. I said, don't give me God. Oh, I don't know how to do that one. They'll give you a fab to go around mm -hmm, the premises mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. see if everything is mm -hmm. in order. Yeah. I finished, graduated. They said they're sending me to my post. God, so being so kind, they sent me to a post, like a luxury building like this, what they call the timeshare. Okay. Mm -hmm. All this timeshare, mm -hmm. vacational mm -hmm. timeshares. Mm -hmm. We're in Miami now. South yeah, Beach. yeah. Sure, sure. Oh. I said, hey, that means it's not work now. <laughs> They're sending me to continue the enjoyment. <laughs> I get to the location. I entered the building, and they're taking me to the basement. Uh -huh. to the I said, hold on, no. <laughs> is the job going to be in the basement? He said, that's where our office is. Okay. okay. Maybe I'll come back upstairs. Mm -hmm. No. When I was shadowing the person that I was supposed to shadow that night, we went into the parking lot in the basement, the dark. <laughs> and then guess the, the, the shift they gave me, 11 to 7. To 7, a midnight shift. I said, am I not supposed to be sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome I to America. I got in there. The first time we went through, and I, and I have to fight for closed spaces, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let alone parking lots. The parking lots. I watch a lot of movies. So you know, you know the trail. All those American guys. movies. Always nice in the parking lot. In the parking lot. <laughs> At night. So the guy will be walking. Ah. I'll be behind me. Say, you're not supposed to walk behind me. You're supposed to walk next. next to me. Oh, my, my God. Say, I'm just there so that if anything happens, I can <laughs> take off. <laughs> they, no. Stay next to me or walk in front. I said, no, I can't walk in front of you. You're a guy and you're not supposed to walk behind me. We started arguing about who's walking where. <laughs> yeah, but you're supposed to be shadowing. <laughs> and you're supposed to be the security <laughs> officer. I'm telling you. The guy that reported me to the supervisor. Oh my gosh. I said, okay, they cautioned me. I said, well, okay, I'd rather stay in the room and watch the cameras. Mm -hmm. I still stayed in the room the next day. I slept off. <laughs> Did they fire somebody, you? <laughs> somebody was beating a girl they brought in the elevator. Oh. They need evidence. The girl went and called the police. They said, does not have evidence. Ooh. I don't know whether I stepped off on the computer <laughs> and deleted the tape. Ah. I don't know what I did. I say, how, when? The guy, you know, I saw him get into the elevator and he got out. They said, but guess what? He used his fab. You, I was supposed to let him out. Yeah. So I have all the logs. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it. Ooh. Yeah, because you were sleeping. I was sleeping. <laughs> so the guy used his fab and got out. Oh, my goodness. So that was the only way they could trace that he actually got into, into the elevator building, with yeah. the girls. Yeah. Because he used his fab to get mm -hmm. in and to get out. Oh, my goodness. Second right top. Say, hey, am I going to keep this job? <laughs> They've only lifted me up twice. I've not even started work. I'm still shadowing. Just shadowing. <laughs> I said, okay, I would adjust myself and I'll be serious. <laughs> so I, I'll sleep during the day and I'll go to work at night. Rude awakening. At the point, I said, I enjoy my job because they have like a spa and everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm the one in charge of closing everything mm -hmm. down. So when everybody has gone, I go to the spa. <laughs> I'll go and take off my uniform. I'll go into the sauna. <laughs> hey, I'll go and Crazy. loudly. <laughs> What is my own? Niger <laughs> girl. These are meant to enjoy. It's true. There's nobody here. There's nobody here. <laughs> oh my God. Unfortunately this for me, crazy. one night, I got into that spa. I'm ready. My routine. <laughs> I've done everything. Used the fab everywhere. I got somewhere, took off my clothes, and I was trying to go to the pool. Hey! <laughs> Abomination. <laughs> Naked man. <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? Oh my oh. God. I almost ran. Upstairs to my office with always. <laughs> that would have been the firing that I'm telling you. Get into the newspaper. What? See, as I go to do, I say, Christy, you are not wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> to go again, the naked yeah. man was walking. walking. Oh, oh my no. God. Abomination. A grown man. man. I say, what? I say, please, sir. Can you put on your clothes? <laughs> <laughs> he said, who are you? Who are you? I'm the security, security officer. Exactly. And why are you dressed like that? <laughs> it was a guest though. Oh, the man lived in the building. Oh, and he was walking and dangling 
I, oh, no care, with, without a care in the world. Without so a care in the world. You. Because I know so the corporate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you see, you know where you're from? And why are you using the facilities? I'm going to report you. I'm going to, I say, I'm very sorry, sir. I'm very sorry. With your I eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see abomination. I said, I did not see you here. You say, yes, you did not see me here. So we didn't see each other. Not you didn't see each other. That's you know that, good. Guess what? Later on, I found out that he did not stay there. Mm. He had to, uh. he got the key from a, from a girlfriend that he was dating, oh. and that's why he was using the premises, and he was even forbidden from coming on the premises. Oh, oh so he was forbidden and he was walking around naked. Yeah, but you couldn't have been able to report that. Report. report because you too. Because I was also guilty. Yeah. Strike one. Eh. <laughs> Strike two. I got out one day again. I was going for my rounds. <laughs> I said I'm not going to that spot again. That place is. <laughs> So there's a rooftop mm -hmm. where you can stay there and see the whole of Miami. Miami beautiful, yeah, beautiful lights and everything. We still got there, ready to <laughs> lounge. I just saw somebody's leg. <laughs> over the leg. I said, hold oh, on, this is not a you can me. <laughs> no, it's a good <laughs> I said, I'm not a counselor. I'm not a paramedics. I'm oh, not telling you. The person wanted to, the person wanted to jump. Himself. Jesus. Oh. Are you serious? With oh, underway wow. again. Ah. Some kind of abomination. <laughs> this. Another naked man. <laughs> I said, what am I supposed to do? If I leave here, this man will die. And he said, I saw him. So I stood oh, there Jesus. and used the walkie-talkie. I was calling my, please, can somebody help me? <laughs> yeah, do your job now. Hey, can sleep. somebody please help me? I'm begging him. I said, sir, you can't kill yourself. <laughs> There's so much to live for. The other, he said, somebody broke his heart or something. Wow. It is mm. on that way. Like you see, he's going to die. And that is it. He's going to end it all. And he comes to find he's a very wealthy guy. Oh. I begged that man that day. I knelt down. I said, God, I wanted to leave that job because it was too much. <laughs> after, it, seeing, after seeing nakedness. Like, and then seeing somebody ah, wanted to come to Saturday. I, I, I said, can, this is work in America. If yes. this is work in America, I can tell you. But, and I, I can imagine that you never ever thought for once ever while you were in Nigeria or even in Cameroon that you would ever be a megad, like you call it. It's megad. <laughs> It's big guy. But guess what? I also did it also as well. I worked in a, it was a federal facility mm. as well. I think that was my, what number job was that? When I first came, I was just jumping from one job to another. <laughs> Every 25, anyone that they paid 25 cents a month, I'm yeah. ready gone. You know? <laughs> I'm ready gone. So that was job number maybe like four or something. But I was also in college and I liked it because it was from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Mm. So I, mm. I would get to study at night. Right. And then my art classes at I think my first class was at nine. So I'll be in school from nine to two. Mm -hmm. I will now get home at 3 p.m. I will sleep till eight, five hours every day. Right sleep till eight, you know, eight, eight thirty, mm -hmm. wake up, leave the house, take the bus by nine something, get mm -hmm. to, so I had that routine. Okay. So then, but you know, the funniest thing what then was, it was, um, I can't, who was that I even told me? I can't remember who told me about the job. But the thing was, when I was in Nigeria, when in college, I, I was, mm -hmm. I, you know, I was a beauty queen. I'd won a beauty pageant. Mm -hmm. So at first I was just like, how did I go from wearing a crown to an attending mm -hmm. state dinners and everything right. to doing security? Oh but God. when I heard how much they were paying, compared to where I was before, where I was doing hello, hi, and all of I that kind of stuff, it was a no-brainer. Okay. It was yeah. a no-brainer from like seven dollars something an hour to mm -hmm. maybe like fourteen dollars an hour, well, almost double. I, oh, is it me, God? I would do. do I would do it. Just give me the touchlight. Anything I'm ready yeah. to do. Yeah. So I was doing that. I was working every. And the funny thing was like, I got. I mean, God's grace is just really with me. When I got there, you know, they would have people working, you know, outside in the parking lot and then in the cold weather and everything. Mm. Somehow I got singled out. I was put in a very nice building, like was wow. a receptionist, you know, Kenny, and so the police officers would come, they would just with me, talk with me. I was just had a lot of favor then. I, I never found myself outside in the parking okay. lot in the cold, except on days when I would come and say I want like extra work, extra hours or something. Mm. But my normal, my normal schedule was always inside the building. My uniform wow. was, I did it very, very, I was so proud. I did it proudly and everything until one day. And it was also like a, it was a cancer research something. Mm -hmm. And I remember one day like that, somebody of all the odd places in the world that anybody, so nobody knew me, you know, so of all the odd places, somebody came there to visit a patient and then the person saw me and he was, he recognized me. Oh, no. And I was, you know, he mentioned my name and I, I didn't know who he was. But if you schooled up with us back then, then you would know, yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 even till today, but the person mentioned my full name, mentioned my school and said, what wow. are you doing here? Oh, wow. And for the first time, mm -hmm. I felt embarrassed and humiliated. and I didn't know what to do. I didn't mm -hmm. even, because it was a friend now. I could have just said, I beg, you know, on the low, low, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. don't say anything. Next thing I know, one of my friends was tell, calling me and telling me that, oh, like the school paper, gossip paper and all Ooh, of that. Wow. It was in there that Miss Yunad was, you know, found doing security. I was like, when she was, I was so 
so so oh, humiliated wow. and embarrassed. Oh, but yeah, but me, if you know me very well, nobody makes fun of me more than me. <laughs> so you can you can only humiliate and embarrass me for like two seconds. Yeah. I always bounce back. Yeah. So I was you know I felt sad and everything. So I was like, please let me go and buy myself correct shoe and bag with the money I made from I this place. After all, so, after all I worked hard for it. Yeah. And I'm getting yeah. paid for it. So I didn't even care. You know me, I'll just take my security hat and everything when I'm calling my friends in Nigeria. Me, I used to calculate when I take my pay, I say one dollar to three hundred naira. You trans ah, you convert it. I'm rich. <laughs> I feel like everybody used to do that. I never <laughs> saw my paycheck in Naira in my own head. Yeah, Sorry, in dollars in my face. I saw the check yeah, every two weeks and I yeah. pick it up like that. I just start converting like, how much Shy. is this? Ah, Omo, I've made money. Until it you start paying the bills. I, and then go. there's nothing left over your life. Where did the money go? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But oh my god, this has been a very, very interesting and um, mm -hmm. perspective from you ladies. I'm so grateful, so appreciative that you guys were able to join me Absolutely. today to share it your experiences um, upon relocating to America and your very first job. I hope you guys loved, loved, loved what we've just done here. If you have, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and also share this link with all of your friends and all of your family members. We'll see you in the next episode.